Hi, welcome. My name is Roxanne Bellotti. I am a child and family therapist and the clinical training coordinator at We Care Services for Children. And I've created this webinar to help parents and caregivers help their kids adjust in this time of COVID-19. I'll be using the terms parent and caregiver interchangeably throughout the webinar. This has been a really hard time to be a parent. Between masks and no school and no daycare and just not having the same social engagement, we're all off of our usual rhythms. And it's been going on now for months and it doesn't feel super clear when this will end. So that in itself has been stressful for everybody. And being a parent is an additional level of stress because your kids are home all the time and um, maybe you're trying to manage them all the time and this has been for a while. Maybe you're trying to work from home and manage your kids, which is super taxing. Or perhaps you lost employment with the virus layoffs. And, or maybe you're an essential worker and you're working, but you come home and you always worry about transmitting the virus to your family. So it's altogether difficult for many reasons to be a parent these days. And I'm hoping that I can offer you some ideas to consider about ways to make things a little lighter um, for you and your kids. So if you are a parent of a baby, no doubt you know that your baby shows stress by crying. But excessive crying is showing you a very stressed baby. And sometimes stress shows up even in opposite ways, like there is a lack of responsiveness, um, kind of flatter in their face, their affect. Uh, maybe there's not as much eye contact or they're not as willing to be cuddly. Or maybe you might see changes in sleep and eating routines. These are ways that babies are letting us know they need a little bit more help. And signs of stress in toddlers and preschoolers, well, if you've got one of those, you know tantrums are a sign of stress. And so aggression, clinginess, fear of being alone, crying a lot, or maybe a short attention span, or sleep difficulties as well for this age group. And sometimes kids who have met developmental milestones regress. So they could have been sleeping through the night and now they aren't. Or maybe they were potty trained and now they're having accidents. It's just some of the stress that comes in those ways. And sometimes kids, their behavior is okay, but they're complaining about headaches and stomach aches and there's no medical reason for it it's just how their body's responding to stress or if they have health concerns like eczema or asthma it might be a little bit more irritated for them right now um, and so you might see more of those episodes the key thing that's going to help your baby or your preschool or toddler is your relationship with them. Young kids really need you to be close. Physical comfort is really reassuring. It soothes their bodies and it makes them feel secure and loved. And regarding the virus, they need simple stories to help them understand what's going on and why the changes are as they are and they need reassurance that the grown-ups are doing what they can to keep them safe and that you and your family are doing what you can to be safe. So what do you say to kids about the virus? You know, it sounds like this strange word, but if you tell them someone has the cold or the flu, they might get it because it's similar symptoms, problems with coughing and fever, and difficulty breathing. It's just that this is a newer virus that we don't know as much about and it's really sticky and it's very easy to get it. So let them know that it's transmitted through droplets from spit, essentially saliva. And so if people are talking, saliva leaves their mouth and um, if they sneeze, it does. And so if that, those droplets land on surfaces and you touch them and then you rub your eyes or you put your finger in your mouth, 
uh, or somewhere up your nasal, nasal passages, any of these kinds of ways that uh, make the virus enter your body, you can get sick. And so that's why we want to wash our hands a lot, why we're wearing masks, and why we're keeping some distance from people, even though we like them and care about them. A key thing that will help your child be less anxious is if they can predict their day. And I know that there's so much that's unpredictable and that might seem like a, quite a burden to be asked to help a child predict their day, but it doesn't have to be grand. I mean, when am I gonna eat? When am I gonna nap? <laughs> when am I gonna play with you? These are kind of the key things that organize their lives. And if you feel like you're not sure on any of that, well, at the most basic level saying, well, first we're gonna do this and then we're gonna do that provides some security. It provides some explanation of what to expect and that's what they need. And without a doubt, having fun with you will give them energy for development and help them to be more resilient. And fun doesn't have to be, you know, very grandiose things. It can be getting some bubbles from the dollar store. Uh, it could be putting on music and dancing around a little bit. Um, it's summer, so outside is, is warmer and uh, you can go and look for butterflies or count how many poppies you see or whatever you want to I spy. Um, finger painting, if you can stand the mess. Um, or even picking up a kite and going somewhere that's windy and, um, you know, being outside and enjoying this time together and feeling engaged with you is going to help. It's going to give them um, a feeling of greater connectedness and it will also be fun and give them energy for growing. Engaging your children in back and forth communication is pivotal to having a good relationship. Back and forth is also known as serve and return. And if you think about like tennis or ping pong, you know, one person hits the ball and another person hits it back, that's serving and returning. And how it would look for a baby is say your baby's lying in their crib and they're kicking away and they're babbling with sounds and you see them looking at something, that's their serve. They're letting you know they have an interest. So your return can be with your tone of voice, your eye contact, and your naming, what it is you think they're looking at. Oh, you like that bird? Or you like that, you know, red ball? Whatever it is you think they might be looking at. And then they continue to kick and, and babble. And so you go back and forth like that. So that's how you would do it with a baby. And back and forth with your, your preschooler or toddler is somewhat easier because they usually have more language skills and they point. Pointing is a great director of back and forth because they'll be interested in something and they point to it and so they've served. And you return with, oh yes, I see, I see that duck over there. Yes, the duck has a green neck. And so that you go back and forth about things and you take turns in this relatedness and it's a very natural thing and you don't need toys and you don't need technology. It's just in life. You could do it at the grocery store. You could do it out on a walk. You could do it in your bedroom. It doesn't require extra stuff. It just means paying attention and being responsive to what they seem to be interested in. And this back and forth not only makes your relationship more secure because you are being engaged with them, but it also helps them to develop self-control because they have to wait for the other person. You know, they have to take turns. And that's like one of the biggest challenges when they're very young to learn how to wait and take turns and share space. So you'll be doing them a good thing by practicing this. Now, what do you do when there's conflict? Because of course there will be conflict. Um, I like this method, regulate, relate, and reason. And regulate is really about what you can do to help a child's body when they're upset. And so I am working on the idea that upset is usually being more angry or, or, or maybe fearful or anxious, but you can also be more sad. So 
a lot of the tips that you often hear are things to create calming, but sometimes kids might need activating if they tend to be more sad and uh, withdrawn. So you have to use your judgment, but regulation is often body-based things. So for example, you can have um, bubbles or pinwheels from the dollar store. And these are things that if your child's upset, you can use to both help them calm their body, but also be in relationship with you, which helps them soothe even faster. And then you can reason with them about whatever it is that you wanted them to understand to do differently. So let's take an example. Say you have a toddler and they're super revved up and they're running around and you don't want them running in the living room because the table has sharp corners and they can get hurt. So you've probably told them a thousand times, don't run or you're gonna get hurt and it may not stick. So how can you help that to shift? So if you say, I see your body's moving really fast and what can we do to help it slow down a little bit? And you say, would you like to blow bubbles or pinwheels? You are shifting their attention to something different. You're helping them to regulate their body by helping them calm. Because if you have to do bubbles, you're doing an exhale. If you have to do pinwheels, you're doing an exhale. So if you're doing those things, you're gonna naturally calm down your body and their body. And if they're doing it with you, it's related. And that is calming too, because they're not alone with their feelings. And then you can move to reason, which is, now I can see that you are liking to run around, but are we supposed to run in the house? No. And so like, what can we do instead? Yeah, I don't know. Well, you can suggest ideas if nothing comes up for them. Like, well, we could do jumping jacks. We could play music inside, or if the weather's nice and you have the time, go outside and go for a walk. Um, these are ways to like get the energy out that's okay. So you have to help them understand that they can get the energy out, but they can't do it around the sharp corners because we want everybody to be safe. So a strategy, box could be your calm down kit, which you and your child could create together. And these could be strategies to help regulate the body. And so Play-Doh is very calming for many people. Some people don't like sensory things that are sticky, but a lot of kids like Play-Doh. It's very calming. A glitter bottle is basically clear glue, glitter, and whatever doodads you want to put in hot water. And you can look on YouTube to get more specific directions. And when you shake that up and then you both sit and you watch it for a little while and you keep breathing, it's gonna create some settling. Uh, manipulatives are things you can use with your hands. And one of the things I wanna bring up is TheraBands. Um, you can get this from sports stores or off of Amazon and they come in different strengths. But if you have a kid who's angry, um, they may not be able to jump to doing breaths because they're too angry but you can pull on a TheraBand over and over and then that can create some release and then they might be able to do something that's bubbles or pinwheels. Books can be great if kids are willing to cuddle up and read a story. And aromatherapy, sometimes having little spray bottles of scents that you really like, lavender and rose are scents that are usually calming. I've mentioned pinwheels and bubbles and gum, like hard chewing gum can sometimes be really soothing for kids, but you have to know the kid because some kids will swallow that gum. <laughs> so you have to think about what your child is like and whether that deep pressure is soothing to them and whether they can keep it in their mouth and not swallow it. So this is not a comprehensive list. These are some ideas and you can Google calm down kits and get more ideas. So it's a start. Reading books about feelings can be a great tool. And these three books I recommend, they're all written by Chandra Ghosh Ippen, and each of the books covers a feeling and it gives you strategies and ways to cope. So Once I Was Very Scared is about fear. You Weren't With Me is about loss and sadness. And Holden Pot is about anger. And uh, at the first of every month, these books are free on Kindle, these particular ones. And if you actually like these books, you can go on Amazon and look them up and you can see 
what people purchased if they like those books and get other ideas if books are a resource that your family likes. It's super important to remember that little kids have friends and not being at daycare and preschool has been tough. And so using platforms like FaceTime and Zoom and Google Hangout or whatever platform you want to use so that they can see each other can be really refreshing and comforting and maintain connection. And I know little kids aren't always liking to be on these networks. So don't have these grand expectations of an hour of a playtime, but just the idea that they are gonna connect with their friends for a little while will, will provide some happiness and give some connection to those relationships to continue when people can all be together again. And lastly, I want to say to remind them of the helpers. I wanna read this quote by Fred Rogers because I really like it. When I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. To this day, especially in times of disaster, I remember my mother's words and I'm always comforted by realizing that there are still so many helpers, so many caring people in this world. So to that end, it's important to help your kids know that while this virus has many of us afraid that there are many nurses and doctors and scientists and lab techs all working towards helping people to be safe and healthy and to find medicines that can help and that they too and you too are helpers because you're wearing a mask and you are maintaining physical distance and washing hands. All of these things are ways that you are helping them to um, be a part of the solution and understand that we are all working together to make things better. If after listening today, you feel that perhaps you need more support, uh, consider referring to WeCare. Uh, we are based in Concord and we are currently doing Zoom-based sessions as well as telephone. And we have childcare solutions, which is daycare and preschool consultation. And this does not have an income or insurance requirement. And if you're interested in that because you have a child who's having challenges in a daycare or preschool setting, maybe you're an essential worker and your child is there, um, please contact Fong Seltzer. She is our coordinator for Child Care Solutions. Her number is 925-305-4262. And if you're interested in mental health therapy, we do relationship-based dyadic therapy, which means we're focusing on how to support the parent-child or caregiver-child relationship as much as possible. And Wraparound and KDA services are family-led strengths-based group support and these are uh, meetings that happen between both families and their providers. And it's at minimum, it's once a month and more if needed. And if you're interested in either of those services, they do require full scope Medi-Cal. And the intake coordinator is Karen Soto. Her number is 925-849-3117. If you'd like to delve further into any of the content I've discussed today, these are the references that I use to create this webinar. Please feel free to look them up. And if any of the images are particularly moving to you, these are all my references for where I obtain my images. And I just wanna thank you for participating today. I hope you found it useful and I wish you and your family well.